My name is Neja Kogoshek Shalomon. Uh, I am I live in Slovenia. I work for the Peace Institute. Uh, I'm actually director of this institute since uh, three years ago. And before that, I started to work for the institute in 2005. Our institute is a, a research institute, a non-profit, private, independent, uh, working in various areas of uh, social sciences, including human rights and minorities. And um, the issues that we are focusing mostly uh, within the area of human rights and minorities um, is um, non-discrimination and equality questions, um, the uh, conditions that Roma community in Slovenia lives in, uh, the position of migrants and asylum seekers, mm -hmm. uh, integration of migrants, of course, and we are focusing also a lot on the LGBT uh, questions. The situation in Slovenia is quite similar as the situation in several of the neighboring countries. But of course, Slovenia also has some specific issues of its own, which are connected to its own uh, statehood, I could say, its own independence that happened in uh, 1991. Mm -hmm. um, so generally, I would say that, we, that our society is um, facing similar uh, issues with regards to Roma com community as some other neighboring countries. Um, mm -hmm. Our Roma community um, ha has about 10,000 to 12,000 um, persons, people. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they are basically um, facing very similar issues such as um, school and education um, difficulties in terms of um, Roma segregation. Um, there are no separate classes or separate schools anymore, which would be intended specifically for Roma. And um, there is also not anymore a problem of um, um, mass placement of Roma children in special schools. Uh, but there is, of course, still a problem within that area. For the Roma child, uh, it is assessed that it's eight times or nine times more likely to be placed in a special school than a non-Roma child. Uh, so, th But there is an intention, I should say, that in the recent years to make sure that Roma are um, included in the general education system as much as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. There are Roma assistants who are employed by these schools. However, it happens too many times that the Roma assistants, instead of assisting these children in the classroom as such, gathers the children and takes them out of the classroom you know, to, to make sure that the, that the other uh, pupils are, uh, you know, can study um, without any kind of interference. So this does happen and this, this is a problem, but it's, a, it's very difficult to monitor because it happens uh, on the spot, you know, in everyday life. Uh, it's not a, a systematic policy, it's not um, uh, a structural problem, but it's just a problem of practical implementation of inclusion uh, of Roma uh, children in, um, in schools. Then another um, issue that I could mention is um, the issue of non-recognized uh, ethnic minorities. We have two recognized ethnic minorities in Slovenia. One is Italian, the other one is Hungarian. And the Roma community has a special status of a community. It's not an ethnic minority, but a community. But in addition to that, there are many other ethnic groups in Slovenia, which are much, much larger from the three that I just mentioned, um, uh, who do not have a status of a minority, which means that they do not have any kind of collective rights which are otherwise recognized to national minorities in, uh, in different countries. Uh, so these minorities are, uh, as one could imagine, uh, people who came to Slovenia in the times of former Yugoslavia. So uh, there, there is a group of 50,000 uh, Croatians in Slovenia. There is a group of uh, almost 50,000 Serbs in Slovenia, uh, mm -hmm. 25,000 uh, Muslims in terms of, you know, Muslim, Muslims as, uh, as ethnic minority, not necessarily mm -hmm. as a religion. Um, uh, a, a large group of Montenegrins, a large group of Albanians, M Macedonians, and so on. So all of these groups are, are, are um, predominant, I mean, the majority of these groups are bigger than the national minorities that are recognized as a minority. So this is a problem. And um, they are striving for uh, some kind of rec recognized status. And uh, the Peace Institute is one of the organizations that supports them in their struggle. Then there is a last specific um, problem that I would like to mention, which is quite specific for Slovenia, and it concerns the erased persons. This is a special group of people who have been uh, deprived by the state of their legal status after the independence of Slovenia in 1992. Uh, this basically means that overnight they, ha they have been 
uh, their status has been changed for, from legally residing permanent residents in Slovenia to I illegal migrants, basically. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the fact if, that they have been living here for many years or many decades before the independence of Slovenia. So this was a major problem. It basically lasts until today. Uh, it, it ha there, has been, there have been a few steps taken to, to remedy the violations. There has been also um, a quite famous case that the European Court of Human Rights decided on the issue. It's called Kuric and others versus Slovenia. And with this case, finally, the, the erased persons in Slovenia who have, whose number is 25,000 uh, receive the right to compensation. Um, then the final thing that I want to mention, which is a little bit more overall, uh, is that recently Slovenia has been pronounced as the first on the scale of countries um, who have been uh, convicted before the European Court of Human Rights. So it, ha it has basically the worst record per capita uh, before the European Court of uh, Human Rights. Um, name, I mean, the, the, the issue is that there are quite many um, complaints that are being filed or, you know, against Slovenia uh, by people living here, and that many of these cases ended in um, uh, conviction, uh, a, a finding a violation of, of human rights. And one of the major structural problems that lie behind that is that our court procedures are very, very long. So uh, um, the, the large majority of these cases were decided because uh, the court procedures have been so long that basically the, the Slovenia violated Article 6 because of um, uh, unjustified delays in, uh, in uh, court procedures. Uh, but so this statistic, this statistic is quite famous right now, but it, it requires a little bit more explanation as to you know, why it is so and what kind of structural problems lie behind uh, those statistics to understand what it really is about. Uh, I wouldn't say on the basis of this statistic that Slovenia really is number one in terms of uh, violation of human rights. It could, this could always be better. <laughs> in general, we see that not just in Slovenia, but I think it's a very general trend across, uh, across Europe, maybe even more wildly, even uh, more widely, um, that research is not taken into account as much as, as it should be, that mm -hmm. uh, measures are often taken taken from a more populistic kind of um, approach, what would please the public, not as much, not so much as what has to be done and what is what are the needs um, from the field. So of course there are instances instances when we are very satisfied that our research um, uh, findings um, go very far, but there are some, also sometimes um, uh, situations when we feel that certain policies are completely out of place, that our um, uh, work shows that the needs are elsewhere, and we are also, um, um, I have to say that we are also making sure that our research does not just, research results do not end up, you know, in some kind of a closet, that they always find their way out to the public. We try to you know, have public events, uh, try to explain what we're doing, try to uh, reach out to the public, try to, you know, gather constituency that would, you know, that agrees with what we do and supports our work and dis disseminates, disseminates it uh, as widely as possible. So um, a, lot, lo a lot of efforts um, are given into, into this part of work as well. Advocacy, you know, interfering in the society, with, with the research that we do, not just, you know, for the sake of publishing it and having a great academic uh, record. Well, definitely um, one of the main achievements that we uh, have been part of, um, the Peace Institute and me personally, is the, um, uh, is the Courage case at the European Court of Human Rights. Namely, this group um, of erased persons who had uh, who, who filed an application to uh, to the court have been has been represented by an Italian attorney, but since this was an Italian person, you know, Italian speaking person, uh, of course English speaking as well, but not Slovenian speaking, um, this attorney needed a lot of support from from the you know from the field in both in terms of how our national Slovenian national legal legal system is functioning, what it, what are the development the developments in the field of you know remedying the problem of, of erasure. And um, also what is happening to the specific applicants, because you have to keep on updating the court to let them know what, what, you know, what kind of legal remedies have the applicants used and what have they tried to, you know, within the country to, to help themselves. So we have basically provided um, the Italian attorney with this assistance 
and I was I was the leader of the team, um, uh, you know, for the last eight years, right? So the, 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 this case is a result of this common endeavor, and I, and I really um, I'm, I was so glad to to you know to see that this case that this case ended um, as it as it did uh, for for the applicants. So I, I think this is the main one, and also the Peace Institute as such has been very active in this, and I think the attitudes of both the public and the Slovenian government changed a lot with our constant involvement in this issue for the last decade.